Ah, and now Kelly is throwing things at me because she doesn't support this idea. I got this. I got this. I got this. Oh, okay. Hi, welcome to the Exploding Bacon Bacon Bits vlog that we're doing this year. Um, it's uh, something we're changing, trying to get uh, keep everybody updated um, with what's going on in the build season. Right now, we are just at the end of our first week. It's been officially seven days since kickoff, and so far we've got a lot of prototyping done. Um, we've also chosen a strategy. Oh yeah, and we're in a brand new build. So throughout this uh, build season, we're going to have weekly vlogs come in here. We're going to have a lot of students talk to you this way. Um, and we're also going to have constant updates coming as to how we're doing in the build season. Hopefully this will help yeah, people understand what a build season with us is like and <laughs> kind of why we do everything we do. We'll have updates from our outreaches that we're doing this season. We'll also have videos that we just think are fun. So now I'm going to bring in Chris Walters. He's going to talk a little bit about some of the prototypes he's been doing. Uh, and what he's been doing all week. <laughs> I'm Chris Walters from Exploding Bacon. I'm a co-president with Zach Cronin Hurley, and I'm one of the uh, mechanical students. And I've been working on uh, shooting prototypes. So the first one I worked on was the linear shooter. That shooter had an aluminum wall on this side and two wheels over here, and it would spit the frisbee in, in between it. And that one worked fairly well, shot about maybe seven or eight feet. The second prototype I worked on was a circular shooter. So basically I had a uh, Lexan plating around the outside of a wheel and I sh shoved the frisbee in in this direction and it spun around the wheel and shot 180 degrees. And uh, that one shot about the same as, about the same length. But uh, the linear shooter shot the same length even though it had sim motors on it while the circular shooters actually had a PVC with, uh, it, the PVC was zip tied onto the wheels and then I put a rope around it and yanked on the rope really hard so the wheel would spin very quickly. And that got just as far as the Sims, so that wasn't very good at all. So basically you were too puny to make it work. Precisely. Cool. The, the third prototype that I created was a circular shooter as well. The circular shooter supposed to work a lot better because the first shooter that I made didn't have as many uh, resources that were applicable to me, so I had a lot of things at home that I built it with, and this one was also hand-powered like the first one. And uh, it worked just as well as the first one, if not a little bit better because I used a pneumatic wheel. So same concept, same deal, different parts, worked a little bit better. The fourth prototype I worked on was the uh, hybrid shooter, and I just finished that one today. Basically, it was a hybrid between the linear shooter and the circular shooter. The circular shooter, I had those credentials of the, the 180 degrees backside, and then I had the uh, center wheel, and then I added an additional wheel out here along with the barrel, so it had the same characteristics of both the linear shooter and the circular shooter. That worked just as well as the other two. The main problem, I think, with the linear shooter and the circular shooter is that the tension, you could never change. The tension was always permanent. You could just change the wheel and the tread on the wheel, but that wasn't good enough. Now I'm about to work on something I like to call the shock shooter. This one is going to work a lot like the shocks of a car. It's going to be a wheel on shocks, and the wall's going to be underneath with the frisbee here. It's going to be up against this wall, but then this wheel's going to be on a shock. It's going to want to push onto the frisbee, but not too much. So it's going to force the frisbee into the wall just slightly, so when the frisbee comes in, it'll roll up if the frisbee wants to get the right tension. So then I can put a spring in between the, uh, the shock wheel and that wall down there. So once I do that, then if I tension the spring at different points, I can figure the actual tension. Oh my god, Chandra, why do you keep staring at me? This is fun. So that was Chris. He did most of our shooting prototypes this particular week. Um, we've also been working on a couple of ground pickup prototypes and a couple ways to climb the tower uh, that we're going to be working on. I'm going to introduce you now to Zach Cronin Hurley, who's our other president, and he's going to talk about some of the things he's been working on. So this week I've been mostly working on prototypes for the floor pickup system because I devised strategy, I did a little bit of math regarding floor pickup robots with 10 point hangs as opposed to feeding robots with 30 point hangs and found some really surprising things if you could score the points in autonomous. Basically the way the strategy works is you would get the two frisbees in autonomous that are either under the pyramid or in the back behind. So 
you go up, you get those after shooting your three off, so you start behind the pyramid, and that gives you a three point atomic. The smoke is just huge. That's the same as hanging high. And then at the end, we'll just go for a ten point hang. The simple mechanism. It's already been prototyped. It's really easy. All right, ready? One, yep. two, three. Cool. So we basically. I wanted to go with that and yeah. then go up and shoot frisbees. Okay. So we just have to figure out a way. In 15 seconds, shoot those three frisbees, which isn't a problem at all. Then drive forward, pick up these two frisbees, put them in the robot, and shoot them out. And I've been working on that. Started out just a simple roller mechanism. The pen basically spins the pen, and then it's got a high grip thing on there, pulls the frisbee through. It works really well. Problem is, we're having trouble getting it onto anything that would actually go into our robot. So. We kind of decided that that's going to be a really hard way to do it. Normally that works really well with circular objects because you can compress them a little bit down, you can roll them up a ramp, but a frisbee you can't roll up a ramp. It's got a weird shape. It wasn't working to get it onto anything. Something that we just came up with right after we finally decided on to go with that strategy is something that goes over the frisbee, so you have it there and then you pull it back if we're only going to go for main pickup and autonomous mode that can be done. Most of what we've done with that so far, it's worked really well. We've gotten it onto the black sand sheet, but we haven't really gotten it into the robot yet. It's mostly what I've been working on. Alright, I think that's uh, good. I think so. I'm going to figure out which one to talk about.